Judge ordered prominent pastor Ralph West to pay a woman he allegedly gave herpes $2.4 million. The Manistee County Sheriff's Office says Jonathan Elwing purchased images of child sexual abuse. Every week there seems to be pastor after pastor after pastor who is falling into some sort of trouble, some sort of sin. So who are we called to be obedient to? Pastor Taryn Dames, seen here on North Dallas Community Bible Fellowship's YouTube page, is accused of trying to solicit a prostitute. Dallas pastor was arrested during an ongoing effort by Plano police to fight human trafficking. A Stanley County pastor in trouble with the law. Kenny Parker is still listed as the pastor of Straight Away Baptist Church in Albemarle. But deputies say that he kept secrets for years that he should have reported to law enforcement. And for some reason, it seems to be that the overwhelming majority of them seems to be some sort of sexual sin, sometimes some other sort of fraud as well. A Dallas pastor will spend 35 years in prison for stealing three churches in Dallas County. Whitney Foster created fraudulent deeds for those churches, taking control of the properties. Does this mean because they're getting exposed, because they are losing their positions, does this mean that this is God actually cleansing the church? A Norfolk pastor charged with sex crimes against a member of his congregation. Well, from the outside, it would appear that that's the case, but the truth of the matter is, it is not God cleansing the church. God is not cleansing the church right now. Now, does God punish for sin? Sure. Are some people being removed because of their sin? And ultimately, does, is God pleased with that if there's some predator being removed? Yes, but this isn't what, what we think it is. Before we discuss that, remember what Jesus tells us. He says that upon this confession that Jesus is the Christ, he says that he will build his church. And because of that, this statement, he says that even the gates of hell or Hades would not prevail against it. And so we should be able to rest assured that whatever is happening, even from inside the body with wolves in the pulpit, those things still will not destroy the church. The church is still strong. The problem is we've got a lot of imposters that are in the church. And for some people, it is very hurtful when you've got a mega church pastor with thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands of people who were listening to their every word and following these people that can hurt people. The founding pastor of Gateway Church, Robert Morris, resigned after a woman accused him of sexually assaulting her beginning when she was just 12 years old. I mean, even my former pastor was someone who has stepped down. Though we don't know what the sin or the moral failing is, he stepped down and that has had an effect on people, not only that go to the church, but people that follow him. A longtime pastor is stepping away from his leadership role at a Dallas megachurch, alluding to a form of moral failure. Dr. Tony Evans has been the lead pastor at Oak Cliff Bible Fellowship Church for more than 40 years. But the question is, is this the, the falling way, the great falling way that the Bible speaks about in, let's say, 1 Timothy 4, 1, it says, but the Spirit explicitly says that in the latter times, some will fall away from the faith, paying attention to deceitful spirits and doctrines of demons. The point is, though, this is not the falling way that's being spoken of in 1 Timothy 4. Now, are we seeing some signs, hints of it? Do we see the, the first days of it? Probably so. But then again, this might be for this might be going on for another hundred years, thousand years. Who knows? But the truth be told is what we're seeing today. We've been seeing this for a long time in Second Timothy. I'm sorry. Second Thessalonians chapter two. He says, now we request you, brethren, with regard to the, to the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, that you not be quickly shaken from your composure or be disturbed either by a spirit or a message or a letter or as if it's from us to the effect that that day of the Lord has come. It has not come yet. Let no one in any way deceive you, for it will not come unless the apostasy comes first. So he's speaking about the coming of the Lord and what must take place first is the great apostasy, this falling away. These people who are rejecting, and this is the important part, they are rejecting the faith, the tenets of the faith. They are denying what has actually occurred, what Jesus did, the cross. He's not the only way. There are other ways, or you can live this way or he's not God. Those different things, rejecting the tense of the faith, that is, and we see those things starting to happen, but we have not seen it in large scale like we are going to see. What we are seeing is something different, and we should not conflate the two. What we're seeing are people with moral, sinful failures, people who are succumbing to sin, and that's what's happening. The sad part is that they are not falling, they're not being put out, they're not being cast away, for bad doctrine. 
Now, we've seen this before in 1 Corinthians 5. Paul brings up the brother of the man who is sleeping with his father's wife, whether it's, whether it's his dead father's wife or his father happens to be alive. Paul um, calls them out for their arrogance, uh, for them not putting him out, not dealing with him. And so Paul instructs him to put him out. But notice, this is not some sort of falling away, some apostasy that Paul is speaking of. This is just some sort of sin, some sort of discipline that is happening to the church. Unfortunately, you would wish that more churches would self-discipline themselves. They would put the person out versus the law having to come in. But that's the state of where we are now, where it's taking someone legally to deal with things rather than the church. Sometimes we have churches that are literally hiding things from the church, or we even see there are pastors who themselves were the ones that were predators. This is the body, and we ought to conduct ourselves accordingly. Arlington pastor Dr. Ronnie Goins is known for his charisma. He pastors at Koinea Christian Church and founded the RWG STEM Academy. The 61-year-old now faces one count of sexual assault and one count of indecent assault, both felonies. Here is the truth. It's a hard truth. It's a sad truth, but it's a truth nonetheless. We are going to have false teachers, false preachers in the church. Make no mistake about it. It's guaranteed you're going to have them. We are going to not deal with them, but we're going to have to call them out. Let's go to a couple people that are making this point. Jesus makes a point. He says, for false Christ and false prophets will arise and will show signs and wonders in order to lead astray, if possible, the elect. Peter says, but false prophets also arose among the people, just as there will also be false teachers who will rise among you who will secretly bring in destructive heresies and they will deny a great many things, even denying the master himself. And so what are we to do about that? Well, Paul also tells us in Romans 16, 17, he says, I urge you to keep an eye or mark those who cause dissensions or divisions and hindrances, not in terms of us getting along, but in terms of doctrine, that those hindrances are caused that are contrary to teaching, to doctrine, which you learned and turn away from. He says, for such men are slaves, not of our of our Lord Jesus Christ, but they are slaves of their own appetite and by their smooth and flattering speech, they deceive the hearts of the unsuspecting. So our job to deal with this is to call them out, to mark them, to leave them alone and cause others to leave them alone. So what we're seeing now is not what we think it is. It is not some, it's not the Lord uh, cleansing the church. It's not some great falling away. That hadn't happened yet. And if you think it's bad now, imagine when these things start taking place. It'd be one thing if people who have not denied the tenets of the faith but are living sinfully, what's going to happen when those very same people are living sinfully while at the same time denying the tenets of the faith? And that's where it's going to be hard to be a Christian. But what we have to do is get to the point where we are fighting now. That's why we expose. That's why we contend. That's why we confront. That's why we... Uh, exhort. That's why we rebuke. That's why we reprove. These are all words that are used by the Bible for us to do. Why? Because he is going to leave these false teachers. They're going to be in place. They will show up as angels of light. They will deceive. They are being deceived and are deceiving others. But our job is to hold tight to the word of God. There will be those who are going to commit all sorts of atrocities and heinous acts while in the pulpit. In many cases, the legal system will take care of them. In some cases, they may not. Hopefully, the church will. But how sad is it that what we see, the reason for being removed, is for sin, but we don't do anything when someone has a destructive doctrine that leads people to hell? We don't remove them for that.